So what's your plan to work with the LDs to get them to entice businesses to come and bring their headquarters back to Arizona? Because, you know, as I said, obviously, the, you know, there are companies in California that are looking to leave California. They want to go somewhere that's obviously more business friendly, and they're flying over us to get to Texas. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to work with the LDs to make uh, corporate, you know, make something more enticing for, for corporations to Well, um, as, as state party chairman, I don't necessarily make policy. Right. Um, but we, we represent uh, constituents who want to elect men and women uh, who are going to be good for business and, and good for our overall economy. Um, this legislature, who, who was just elected, has a tremendous uh, um, challenge in front of them. Um, they've not only got to overcome the deficit situation we find ourselves in, we have an opportunity. I mean, things are, things are so, so bad right now. These men and women have an opportunity to make fundamental changes to how the state runs uh, their business, the government. And, and it's about less regulation. It's about uh, uh, entrepreneurship and, and free enterprise. It's about not increasing taxes, but spreading the tax, the tax burden. And, and as John F. Kennedy, that great, uh, you know, not so liberal Democrat right. said, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, it, it's a proven fact, and we've seen that happen over and over again. When you make a proper environment for business to, to operate, uh, business, and it's a free enterprise system, we find a way to make money, to, to hire people, to spread the wealth all over the state, and you don't do it by raising taxes, you don't do it by creating impediments to, to the development of new businesses, and you don't do it by harming existing businesses. And, and frankly, even though the Arizona state government historically over the past 25 or 30 years has generally been business friendly, let's face it, when Janet Napolitano was elected in 2002, a lot of things changed and not for the better. And, and Governor Brewer has really barely had a chance to put her imprint on what happens here in the state. As state party chairman, I'm going to help elect more Republicans who I think feel that same way. Might I have an influence in, 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 you know, in, in who's going to be elected and who's going to be leading the state? Perhaps. But still the people who are going to make that decision. We stand on a party platform, our party platform at the Arizona Republican Party. At the Arizona Republican Party is one of the best it's ever been. It's very, very uh, free enterprise. It's very friendly to the taxpayer. And that's not going to change if I am elected state party chairman. I can assure you of that. It's only going to be more free enterprise as we go forward. And I'm sure if John F. Kennedy were alive today, he'd probably be a Republican. I think that, I, you know something? <laughs> it, 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 it's interesting to say that because I was just listening to a, to a talk show. He probably would have been uh, a Republican. And you know what? By today's standards. And, and, and as much as Harry Truman hated Republicans, he'd be a Republican today as well. Uh, John Kennedy was, was a Cold Warrior, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, John F. Kennedy was known, for example, you know, for, for desegregation and for civil rights. Well, you know, that's what Republicans, uh, you know, that's what we're all about, too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Democrats who came willingly to the civil rights issues. It was the Republicans. The, it was the Republicans. And it, and it was a, 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 pretty, um, a pretty tough guy who was president at that time, Lyndon Johnson, who, who dragged them kicking and screaming. But it was the Republicans who helped them going all the way back to 1958 pass civil rights legislation. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, you talked about the media before. The media always chooses oh, yeah. you know, to forget that. But, but the historians who write about this, they don't forget it. And, and that's part of our legacy going back all the way to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what, uh, how can you get the Republicans that are in D.C. to understand that they work for us and they don't work for themselves and they don't work for their Beltway buddies? How can you bridge that? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think, I think the, the, the main thing is, is, is keeping in contact uh, with our elected officials. Uh, what happens so often is somebody will get elected, let's say to Congress, for the first time. And they really use the county party where they're from. They're, they're very in touch with their legislative district folks, you know, because sometimes there's more than one legislative district that's involved. And they're, and they're involved with the state party. 
Well, you know, once they kind of get their machine going, they, they rely a little less upon the state party than what they did in the beginning. It's not just because that's the direction they're going. Maybe the state party hasn't kept in good enough contact with them. Um, as, as national committeeman, I'm back in Washington three times a year. I'm going to be there a minimum four times a year, and the majority of my time back there, as well as here, is going to be spent nurturing our relationship, making sure that, that we keep in communication, that we keep those ties very, very close. Um, there, there's a lot to be said uh, about how uh, a political party is about raising money, uh, get out the vote, and get out the vote isn't just the 72 hour kind of get out the vote anymore because it's more like a, a 30 day or more get out the vote effort. It's about registering voters, uh, recruiting precinct committee people, and, and helping recruit uh, good conservative candidates. Well, we need to do all those things, but we need to communicate with our elected officials. We need to keep the lines of communication open between our elected officials and the people who work within the party, as well as you know the rank and file voter in town halls and so on. I certainly would be encouraging of any of our uh, elected officials from state level all the way through uh, uh, the Senate and the Congress to do that. And, and I think that's, that's part of how we nurture that relationship and how we keep them in contact with us. Uh, there's, there's lots of talk about how there you know, maybe ought to be federal term limits. Well, I think that elections are, are a great terms limit uh, sort of a vehicle. And, uh, you know, we've seen here in this state, when people rise up, what's happened. Um, I think that elections are, are very good term limits. And, and we ought to make it attractive for our elected officials to keep in contact with us and us in contact with them. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of groups over the past month or so, and actually much longer than that, talking about how important it is we've elected this new group of, of congressmen. We need to make sure they know how we feel. We need to keep track of their votes. And this goes into the state legislature right. as well. We need to continue watching what they do. Not just the Democrats, but our own guys. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's part, I, mean, I think that's part of the responsibility of being a good voter, being a good citizen. And if we are involved in this party, in this movement, we need to continue doing that. It didn't stop on November 2nd. Like I said, that was a battle. The war is a long way from being won. And we need to win it with our guys being better soldiers as well. That's correct. Right. That's correct. Right. And uh, lastly, like I said, you want to just maybe speak to the camera here and just say, you know, who is Bruce Ash and why should we support you? Well, uh, Bruce Ash is somebody just like the rest of us. Uh, grew up here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, born and raised, uh, educated here, uh, raised my family here. Uh, my, my, my extended family uh, is, is, is still here in Tucson and, and we're Arizonans since 1942. Uh, I believe that this is the greatest state to live. And um, we've, we've been blessed, you know, Arizona is an interesting place. For such a small population, we have managed to have some of the greatest leaders in, in, in the U.S. Congress, whether it's Barry Goldwater or Paul mm -hmm. Fannin, uh, you know, whether it was, um, you know, John Rose, you know, Carl Hayden on the Democrat side, Mo Udall. I mean, we have, we've had extraordinary leadership. This is a great place. I, I've been fortunate to, to live and work here. Um, in my own life, I was a volunteer activist. I was a, involved in philanthropy for a number of years. But when 9-11 happened, that was the thing that really changed it for me. I had a son who was a senior in high school, one who was a senior in college, and I felt I thought that whatever I had been doing, it paled in comparison to the political process and making sure that we have the best people involved. I've been involved helping uh, as a donor to conservative candidates, uh, as a part of their campaigns, uh, and now within the Republican Party. And uh, well, it's it's been an unbelievable almost ten years now, uh, but I'm really looking forward to the next two years, hoping that. Uh, we have a chance to elect a Republican president and, um, uh, and, and, and elect uh, what I hope will be a Republican uh, uh, U.S. Senate. It could be a great opportunity, one that you know, we haven't uh, um, uh, had you know, this kind of opportunity in, in, in quite a while. And I'm up for the task, and, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. All right. I appreciate your time.
And this is uh, Chris Flowers, the Young Republicans, here with uh, Bruce Ash, who's running for the Arizona State uh, Chairman. Thanks very much. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.